the sport is moving, and the other sport, that was no, already not happening in the 80s. Some of the top guys in cross-country skiing, in, uh, cross-country was different, because the World Cup, everybody had to be there. But, you know, in um, the ultra specialization in track and field, and, and the idea of periodization with either one or two peaks a year, changes completely the way uh, these people put the races together. So in the 80s, uh, I would say the races were most of your training, just have to be fit to start, and then the races were bringing you up here. Now it's the opposite. You build as strong as you can before, tailoring the training on your characteristic. And you know now training is not just what you do on a bike. Training now is what you do off the bike too. So you know we know the training, the same kind of training, the same schedule of training, doesn't upregulate the, the gene in the same way with two different diets. So this training goes with this diet. We know that they, the signaling, the biological signaling, it is a multi-level, you know, could be to the brain, could be to the hormones, heart, lungs, muscle, genes, the, the interaction between diet and training, we didn't even think about. At that time, the only problem we had with diet, make sure that they were starting racing in the right way. So we had this rule of the 3%. You stop the season, whatever weight you have at the end of the season, as far as you didn't have an injury, that plus three to five percent gain is allowed in winter. You need to restart the season below three percent. That was as simple as it means for a 70 kilos guy, you can gain two to five kilos. Make sure that when you start racing, you're more two kilos overweight, and then you buy the zero, you'll be fine. <coughs> that was the idea. Now, I mean, we don't even look at the at the at the numbers that much. Now, first of all, in those years, we're looking at fat percentage. So we're stressing the rider, remember, pinching the riders. Mm. Oh no, you're a little too fat. Now in the sport nutritionists get mad. They don't they don't want to stress about fat and, and weight much. So we look more pretty much what's your weight or how you feel when you're at peak performance. So uh, I talked to the rider, we have a camp now started yesterday in uh, in Denia, Spain and joining uh, <coughs> the camp tomorrow. And you know, we don't we're not so stressed. We check the weight because you know we need to know the weight, for example, for st stage races to monitor the fluctuation of weight on day by day for you know dehydration versus glycogen depletion. So now we look at the weight, but you say, you know, last year looked like you you know, we have all the data from the previous year for each year rider, we have a profile, power profile, weight profile, biological profile. And say, okay, it looks like you know you got the best six weeks of last year when you, where your weight was between 71 and 72.3 kilos, when your 20 minutes power or your five minutes power are in this proportion. And so we know what the model where these athletes perform. So we tailor the training to that point. The first year when you don't have previous data is a little more challenging. So I use experience. So I talk to riders. And actually, pro riders are the easiest because you have a lot of data, even if you never work with them. You know the race where they do well historically. Tell you another story. I was trying to help uh, Michele Bartoli when I was uh, with uh, uh, Mape to do well at the Giro. So Michele, one of the strongest riders I ever worked with, he could win. He won Liege, Bastogne Liege, Flash uh, Ballon. He won World Cup two years in a row. And you know, we, we knew that he had the talent to be a stage race rider. So, but you know, normally at the time of the Giro was after the classics was always going down. So one year we we started everything one month later. So they do everything. You know, the year before he peaked for the Asian Flash that are two three weeks before the Giro. So let's start everything one month later. So you have that peak at the beginning of the Giro. Forget even if you don't win those classics for one year. So the project was to have him in yellow jersey. He put the yellow jersey, but he lost. Them. So we did everything one month. So it was technically five weeks behind his number from so it was not a good still one uh, Liege Baston Liege. And I see this happen all the time. The rider tend to do well in some races even when they're not hundred percent. There is something that has to do with the, the way mentally you approach that specific race, especially if the race that you already won. Start the Giro race shape. So everything will put the uh, the uh, pink jersey one week, ten days into the Giro, start to have bad allergies, start to have things, everything goes down. We put him out the gym. You want the stage, you want the, yeah, the, the pink jersey for a few days.